Welcome back to Coding Commanders. I'm Commander Candy and today we're going to learn all about propositional logic for game development. Logic is the foundation of all computer programming, including game development. The better you understand logic, the easier it is to make your games fun, fast, and efficient. Mathematics, science, and computer programming are all based on logical reasoning. Logic is a way of determining whether things are valid or invalid, true or false. Logic defines a set of rules. It's a way of making sure everybody's on the same page. Common human language is often left open for interpretation. If you tell your friend, Tippy's house is so big, you're not actually telling her anything about the size of the house. What you consider a big house might be different than what your friend considers a big house. <laughs> what you think is a big house, maybe she thinks is small. There's no room for this type of interpretation in game development. A computer can't interpret this type of language, and even if it could, its interpretation could lead to unexpected results. If what you think is a big house is different than what the computer thinks is a big house, you're going to get unexpected results. So we have to learn a set of rules that the computer is able to understand. We, we have to basically use language that's specific, you know, very specific as to what we want to happen and when. So what is propositional logic? Propositional logic is also known as statement logic because what it is is we're using statements to determine whether things are valid or invalid. It is the process of determining if a statement is true or false based on certain conditions, right? So this is like, this is where our if statements come from. You know, if you've done programming before, you might be familiar with if statements. They're derived directly from propositional logic which is one reason why propositional logic is so important. So based on certain conditions, things will either happen or not happen. At the end of the day, anything can be broken down to true or false logic. For example, say you're taking a multiple choice test with four options, A, B, C, or D. Only one answer is correct. This can be broken down to propositional logic by evaluating each possible answer as true or false. Once each possibility is evaluated, the true answer is the answer you select. As a programmer, your goal is telling the computer exactly what to do in every possible scenario. Now, of course, there, no, there's no programmer that has always covered every single possible scenario in every single block of code. We're human, right? Stuff's going to happen. Things are going to go live. Something's going to break. There was a scenario you didn't think of. That doesn't make you a bad programmer. That makes you human. But your goal should be to cover every possible scenario. If your goal is to cover every probable scenario, your code's going to break when it goes live. If your goal is is to cover every possible scenario. Some things might break when they go live, but not as much. It's gonna be easy to manage and fix. We use propositional logic to define conditions. When will code execute? Since logic is based on rules and definitions, let's define a proposition. A proposition is a statement. A proposition has a truth value. That means a proposition is either true or false. And it has one single truth value. That means it can't be both true and false. It has to be one or the other. A proposition is either going to be true or it's going to be false. It can't be both. And it can't be jelly beans or 568. It can't be any of that shit, okay? It has to either be true or false. There's two possibilities. So let's do some examples here so we can make sure we all know what a proposition is. Linux is an operating system. Is this a proposition? Is it a statement? Yes. Does it evaluate true or false? Yes. And it has only one single truth value. Either Linux is an operating system or it's not an operating system. 
It's a proposition, yay! How much does Daisy love hatniks? Is this a statement? No, it's not a statement, it's a question. And also, it wouldn't evaluate true or false. I mean, it could be a word, it could be a number. I mean, who really knows? This is, a, this is not a proposition. What about this one? H plus D is less than three. Chat, chat, chat. Thank you, Hatnix. Chat, I need participation. Somebody tell me, is this a proposition? While I wait, I will eat some bratwurst with egg salad. It is a statement. It's a statement. It does evaluate true or false, but it doesn't have only one single truth value because depending on what H and D are equal to, it could be true or false. So eh, this is not a proposition. If H is negative two and D is negative one, then it would be true. But if H was four and D was six, it would be false. So that's why it's not a proposition. Does Grave have a job yet? Grave has a job. That was a good question. Thank you, Grave. Grave has a job would be the proposition way to do that. That could either be true or false. You either have a job or you don't have a job. Oftentimes, usually when we're trying to solve a problem, we have to combine propositions together in order to solve the problem, right? We do this by using variables like P, Q, R, S. In propositional logic and in logic, P, Q, R, S are like the standard variables used, but anything can be a variable, right? We already went over variables, things like that, bar hatniks, bar king, bar average, anything can be a variable. We also are going to use our logical operators such as and and or. And comparison operators, now let's look at our comparison operators. Comparison operators are used to compare values. A lot of these you're probably familiar with too. This one's less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to, and not equal to. When we write conditions in GDScript and most programming languages, we use two plus because when you set a variable equal, you say it equals that number. So if you use one equal sign, you're saying that it's always equal. You're setting it equal. If you want to say if it's equal and not set it equal, you use two equal signs. So X is equal to Y. A is not equal to B. Logic operators. Logic operators are used to write logic. We use them to describe when code will execute. So here's a um, common logic operators and. That means both of them. Color and number. That means color's true and number's true. Or. Steak or fish. That means you're either having steak or fish. For this to be true though, they can both be true. Or just one of them could be true. With and, they both have to be true. Color and number have to be true. For steak or fish, steak could be true, fish could be true, or they both could be true. Not fish means it has to be false. This code will execute if not fish. Fish must be false in order for the code to execute. Now let's talk notation. Okay, let's do an example. We're going to let P equal Sally is 42 and let Q equal Linda is 36. P and Q. This, let me change. I like the little pointer thingy, my Bobby. Okay. This little symbol here in mathematics means and. It's like the ampersand, ampersand in GD script. P and Q. In order for this statement to be true, both P and Q have to be true. So in order for this to be true, Sally has to be 42 and Linda has to be 36. If either one of them lied their age, this is going to be false. Here's the truth tables. P or Q. This symbol means or. It's like the pipe pipe in GD script. In order for P or Q to be true, P can be true, Q can be true, 
or they both can be true. So if Sally's 42, this is true. If Linda's 36, this is true. If Sally's 42 and Linda's 36, this will also be true. Exclusive. This symbol means exclusive. And there's two possibilities of truth and two of untruth. I didn't see an exclusive operator in GD script. If anybody knows there is one and I just missed it somewhere, let me know. But I didn't see an exclusive operator. Um, but many programming languages have this. What this means is this evaluates true if P is true or if Q is true, but they can't both be true. If Sally's 42 and Linda's not 36, this will be true. If Sally's not 42, but Linda is 36, this will be true. If Sally's not 42 and Linda's not 36, this will be false. If Sally's 42 and Linda is 36, this would be false. Implication reads, if P, then Q. P is called the hypothesis, and Q is called the conclusion. And this is a conditional statement. Now, if statements directly come from implication, so this is an important one, because we're going to use implication to construct our if statements. This reads, if P, then Q. Or you could also say P implies Q. And how this would read with our values plugged in, if Sally is 42, then Linda is 36. That means that if Sally's, if Sally's not 42, then the statement doesn't even matter because the statement's only going to apply if Sally's 42, right? If Sally's 42 and Linda's 36, it'll evaluate true. If Sally's 42 and Linda is not 36, then it's going to evaluate false. By conditional reads P if and only if Q. You also, you write it like this. Some people might, Hatnix, do you remember the IFF? Did, didn't they have that in basic or am I remembering that wrong? So I'm getting it confused with my mathematical training as a youngster. Sally is 42 if and only if Linda is 36. That's P if and only if Q. Um, what this means is if P then Q and if Q then P. It works both ways. If Sally is 42, Linda is 36. If Linda is 36, Sally is 42. It goes both ways. P implies Q and Q implies P. Negation, that means not. In mathematics, you can see it written any of these ways. This is the one you're probably the most familiar with. That's the negative sign, negative symbol, like negative three. If this means not P, the opposite of P. Oh, you can say it not P, the opposite of P, negative P. And the truth table for this, if P is true, not P is false. If P is false, not P is true. So here's our example. Your friend offers you a turkey sandwich. You are only interested in eating it if it is made with German mustard. Write your, spot, write your response using implication. Okay? So let's look at this. Remember, we're going to write a conditional statement. If P, then Q. And if not P, not Q. If you're going to eat a turkey sandwich, if it has German mustard, you're not going to eat the turkey sandwich if it doesn't have German mustard because there's that condition put on you eating the turkey sandwich, right? It has to have German mustard for you to eat it. So if it doesn't have German mustard, you won't eat it. So if P, then Q. If not P, then not Q. The hypothesis is sandwich. That says as. It's supposed to say has. The hypothesis is sandwich has German mustard. The conclusion is I will have a sandwich because our assignment here was to write our response. So how, so it's not actually eating it, it's responding to your friend, I will have the sandwich. So let's let P equal German mustard. 
let Q equal yes. And we're going to let R equal no. We're going to give a separate variable to not Q. So Q is yes, not Q. We're going to call R and give the response no. If P, then Q. And if not P, then R. So this is how we would write it in GD script. If German mustard is true, we could also just say if German mustard, but let's just, if German mustard is true, print, yes, I would love a sandwich. Else, print, no, thank you. If I'm coding best not speak, I got work as you can see. I'm a STEM girl, you took English. What you trying to be? Now, thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to check out CodingCommanders.com where you'll find more tutorials on Godot, Linux, HTML, and much, much more. Also, don't forget to check out my brand new Linux gaming blog where you'll find intriguing articles by Hatnix, Sir Dialot, and myself. Thank you again for watching, and until next time, happy coding. I'm the baddest tech to beat. No, you probably sub to me with a lap bag at my feet. My code on a USB. And I do it on my own. Ain't got no time to be on the phone. Think these bros be mad at me? Their intimidation shown.